getting up here today. Um, hello everybody, uh, my name is Brady O'Donoghue and I'm the Director for Advocacy with the Traveller Visibility Group here in Cork. The Traveller Visibility Group is a, a, a network of travellers that work together to uh, address the issues that travellers are facing across the city and also across the country. Um, I'm a traveller woman and I come from a, a long history of traveller women that have proven to be very resilient over the test of time. We live on the margins of society in Ireland and we have always faced major inequalities with regards to services and access to services. In 2022, traveller women are still dying 10 to 15 years younger than the national average. 10 to 15 years younger. Our health stats are so poor at this stage that they compare to, I suppose, society in the 1950s here in this country. Traveller women are still being turned away from women's refuges because there are other travellers in the building already. We are living in, I suppose, in a society today where we are, are, have been so uh, marginalised at this stage that our health stats are just getting poorer and poorer. Our suicide rate is seven times higher than the national average. Our infant mortality rate is three times the national average. If you look at the size of our population, we're less than 1% of the population. Less than 1%. Less than 30, 36,000 travellers across the, the island of Ireland. And we're still facing those types of um, uh, head stats. We fare very poorly on, uh, right across the board with regards to accommodation, education, employment. We are working, I suppose, in our organisation to support traveller women specifically because for us, they're the key into the, the wider community. We have um, run groups over the years around, um, uh, I suppose, domestic violence in particular has been very high uh, within our, our community. While it's not part of our culture, it is very prevalent and very high. But I suppose the biggest fear for us as a community is that traveller women who live on haunted sites in this city do not get the same protection as the average woman on the street. We have been told time and time again members of my community by, on Gardaí, uh, by the Gardaí after making some uh, emergency calls that we are a member of an ethnic group and we take care of these things ourselves. You know, So that's the type of issues that the traveller women in this country are facing on a daily basis. I'm going to hand you over to Eileen Burke now who specifically works with gender-based violence and she'd like to have a word with you about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, based violence in the community. Traveller women are 20 times more likely to suffer domestic violence. Traveller women make up 5% of the Irish population but represent 15% of all domestic violence services. The most common services for traveller women to use is a refuge and are more likely to use a refuge more than once. All of this is not because domestic violence is more common among travellers than other groups but because traveller women face more barriers when it comes to leaving violent relationships. Myths. Violence is not part of our culture. It is not and nor was it ever part of our culture. And there's a huge myth, myth out there. And as Brayden right said, sometimes when Gardaí are called, this is, what, this is what women face, they say that we deal with that kind of thing ourselves. Um, women do not accept violence. Traveller men are no more violent than settlement. men. There is very little data by, uh, by ethnicity, yet there are many generalizations about travellers. Violence against women is the same in all communities and is an issue of gender equality and power and control, coupled with barriers to seek and help and reporting and leaving. Barriers to seek and help, education, low levels of awareness, information, literacy, language skills, and uh, low employment. Unemployment, poverty, and lack of means to provide for basic needs if she leaves, if she leaves. For housing, discrimination is another one uh, by local authorities and private landlords, poor accommodation, conditions and overcrowding, not enough suitable accommodation, complications with movement from one local authority to another, the discrimination and the negative treatment that traveller women face um, and the lack of access to health services to deal with the effects of violence and the isolation, leaving a violent relationship, may be leaving her community. Understanding the different forms of domestic and sexual violence um, 
are all part, are all are some of the barriers that traveler women face within our community when they seek help. And of course, fear and mistrust in the authorities and the negative treatments and services leaves women reluctant to report violence. And they fear that reporting abuse will further stigmatize the community and reinforce negative stereotypes. Having in my research, traveler women and traveler women and male domestic violence develop in a culturally appropriate response. A series of focus groups and in-depth interviews, its research report informed Heavy Pines Shadow Report on the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. This research examined how ethnic and gender relations intersect to affect traveler women's experiences of violence and the effect they have in seeking behavior and options for, for, for protection. So thanks very much. This is a lovely venue actually because just around the corner in Tuffy Street in the 70s, um, I was a founder member of the Cork Family Planning Clinic. And at that time, contraception rights for women were appalling. We could not get our hands on even non-medical contraceptives, even condoms. So we set up the clinic illegally, we ran it illegally, and um, we asked for donations in return for the condoms. And we even managed to do vasectomies there. It only closed down a few years ago, so it operated for many, many decades. And in that era as well, if people like me, who grew up in the 50s and 60s remember, there was a, it was a stultifying society to exist in. You had church control and state control over women's bodies. You No access to contraception, obviously, except for those clinics that opened. And there was only one in Galway, Cork and Dublin at that time. Um, and people from the other counties used to come here. And there was opposition. I mean, the last weekend when Rosa had a stand um, with leafleting for this particular outing, the, um, the Rosary group came and disrupted it. Well, we had the same when we opened the clinic in the 1970s. There was a Rosary group that used to stand outside the front door in a half moon, and we used to have to escort people in and out. Um, it, it was, people have no idea the, the, the atmosphere. As well as that, women, if you went um, and had a baby, you had to be churched afterwards. The church's view was that after having a baby, you were dirty, so you had to be cleansed. And there was a ceremony, a, a rite in the church um, that took place with the priest presiding over it to make you clean again. Um, this is unbelievable stuff that we had to fight back. And as well as that, then you had the, the incarceration, the illegal incarceration of women in the Magdalene laundries and in the mother and baby homes. Um, and really today, this, this fight, go, even for contraception rights, something as simple as that and as basic as that, the fight goes on. Um, we still do not have open and free of cost availability of non-medical contraceptives and free of cost of medical contraceptives to anyone. And there's um, a review going on at the moment in the government um, for the abortion law. And that's something to keep pushing keep watching because the government will backtrack on that despite the vote um, and and the, the success of the repeal campaign was something to celebrate. Um, as well as that, you have the disparity in pay between when men and women um, and equal pay is such a, a basic right also. And I think it's only right that Rosa has put the emphasis on no to war today because you see on the screens every night in the news, women and children fleeing both Russia and the Ukraine with their children and the men staying behind to fight. And those women and those children are going to have that trauma in them for a long, long time. And the, the um, International Women's Day, um, as was spoken about by Martina earlier, the origins are in no to war after World War One. So it's fitting that we would ally it to that and that we would be against imperialism, be against the NATO expansion to the east, be against the troops going into Ukraine. Um, and, you know, just to emphasize that we can't emphasize it enough, I think. <laughs> Thank you.